Stephen, how can you go with... They need, they, they need a lot. There's no question they need a lot. I, I would argue that, that they could do with freshening up in the middle of the park as well. So, back, middle and front, they need strengthening. But if you can get Sterling, then it's not a bad move. Now, the question becomes, do you get a Sterling and trade off the fact that you're not getting a centre-back? That's kind of where you should be. It's not, it's not that it's a bad move to get Sterling. It's a bad move if you use up a chunk of your money when there are more important areas in the field. That's, that, that would be my concern. If you can do both, then Sterling's a great one. But if it becomes one or the other, then clearly they, they're invisible in the back right now. It's tough to see who's actually there. But then from the Manchester City perspective, Nadem, what are your thoughts on the fact that they'd be selling to a Premier League rival? Um, it would be a shame because we've seen how effective he has been across all those years, whether it was at Liverpool, whether it you know, was at City and the like. But this is just the nature of football. You, I don't think you should have a divine right to stop a player from going somewhere like that because if you ultimately say you know, that he can leave, it's basically saying that you don't, you don't worry about sort of the effect that he can have upon you. So he could go to Chelsea and he can make them better. But for City, they believe that they'll be better off without him if that ends up being the case. And then I guess you're just rolling the dice as such. But, you know, I'm sure the guys maybe agree with this. But as a player, you know, you should be free to be able to go somewhere. If a club wants to let you go, in my opinion, they should not be able to limit where you can go. Because if they're letting you go, they believe that you're not good enough to be able to stay on your side. So, you know, if he goes there, I hope he does really, really well. And he can prove a point to all these doubters and things like that. But if City are letting him go, you know, they have a lot of faith in Alvarez. They have a lot of faith in Haaland, a lot of, a lot of faith in Grealish, Mares, you know, to name but a few. So things, this is just the way that football goes sometimes for Sterling. You know, if he wants more football, it's, it's going to be down to him to decide, essentially. You know, if someone says they want him, he's going to say yes or no. And for City, they can't just keep him there forever because at the end of the day, if they keep him for one more year, he's going to walk away on free anyway. What a great bit of business that would be. You get the most, arguably, the most sought-after player in Haaland for, what, 75 mil? And you can get rid of Sterling for 50. So it's cost you 25 mil for the hottest property in town. And you're still left with, with Mares and Grealish and all these other players. I mean, it's, it's absolute common sense is what it is. You move on. But, and on top of that, I mean, far from me to rile up some Chelsea fans again, but the truth hurts. They're not a major, major rival at the moment. I was waiting for it. Well, what do you mean you were waiting for I was, it? I, was, I, even well, chose well, my, I even chose my words to not say well, a Premier League title rival because I knew you'd come in on this one. Are they, they're not a title rival next season. No, they weren't a title. They should have been, to some extent, a title rival last season. They shot themselves in the foot within their own squad. They've, they're weaker. They've, their ownership's obviously been a shambles for obvious reasons. They've had a change in that. So there's a lot of uncertainty. They've lost a lot of players. Their main striker has been a disaster and he's off skate to Italy. And we'll probably talk about that again. So they're weaker than last year, where they were, and I don't know exactly the points, but it was around 20. So it's not like City are selling to Liverpool. It's not like in the old days when Wenger and Ferguson were going headbutting each other every week that neither of them would want to sell to either of them because they were so close. They're not, they're not a major rival at the moment. And I know I get it, Chelsea fans will be, you know, spinning at the TV and blah, blah, blah. blah. The truth hurts. The truth hurts. They, they, they were shown to be what they are last season. Yeah, there was the odd cup run, and please spare me the Club World Cup. Right, spare me. That cup blows away in the wind. The major stuff, they were shown to be short. So, City for Guardiola, he backs himself, as Nedham said, but they're selling to a team at the moment that's got quite a bit of work to do, quite a bit of work to do, to be a rival over 38 games. Chelsea are just back in the pack now, aren't they? You know, they, they, they looked as though at one stage, maybe, what, 18 months ago, where they could maybe start rivaling City and Liverpool. But now, when you look at them, they're back in the pack. You, you, you couldn't choose between them and Spurs, in particular, 
who's going to be better next season? And we don't think Spurs are anywhere close to the top two. So actually, Chelsea are going the wrong way. Chelsea, Chelsea, are, Chelsea are looking as though, will they get... The question now is, will Chelsea get in the top four? Not will Chelsea win the Premier League or the Champions League. That's where they are right now. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.